Hello, this is Dr. Subramaniam here. I'm one of the senior consultant anesthetists working at Astor Arby Hospital. The reason why I have created this video is I seriously want to help people recovering from COVID-19 so that they can get back to their normal life as quickly as possible. There is also a section on breathing or respiratory exercises. It will really help people who are in the active phase as well. Your doctor might have just told, congratulations, you have been recovering and you have won a personal bar against COVID-19. You will be allowed to discharge, to go home. But what we have to remember is we carry the responsibility of keeping ourselves healthy and also to prevent others from getting infection from us. The first thing which comes to my mind or anyone's mind when you're asked to go home is how to get back home. It is preferable to avoid using public transport like KSRTC or BTS buses or Metro. Please do not use them to go home. Please use your personal or private transport to get back home. When you get back home, you will be advised to continue isolation for at least seven more days. Most likely you'll be discharged 9th, 10th, 11th days. Most of you will recover quickly. When, uh, when you ask to isolate at home, it is advisable to stay in a very well-ventilated room in the house. Identify a room in your house which has got windows, preferably more than one. There is a fan in there, sunlight can get into the room and preferably has an attached bathroom or toilet. You may, if you have an AC, it's preferable not to use AC because it recirculates the same air in the room. But some of the modern ACs do have HME filter. If you have that, please, you can use them. Because you're likely to stay grounded in one place or one room of the house, you may want to entertain yourself with the gadgets like computers and televisions, etc. Please do have it within your room. Important thing to remember is we have to follow all the instructions given by the doctor at the time of discharge. Take all your regular medications along with your COVID recovery medications as advised before discharge from the hospital. You may want to monitor your blood pressure and blood sugar regularly. I'm mentioning this blood sugar because some of the people who have suffered from COVID-19, their blood sugars go haywire. You may want to check it every day. Monitor your temperature, oxygen saturation in your blood. If you develop any signs of difficulty in breathing, please have emergency contact numbers and contact your hospital immediately. There are a number of other safety practices which you need to adopt. First of them is do not go out. Do not go out of your house for at least seven days. Do not invite visitors. Please, no visitors at this point of time. We know they care for you, but advisable not to allow any visitors to home. In your home, there might be other people living with you. Please maintain social distancing at least for seven to 10 days. Wear mask if you happen to have be sitting in the same room and maintain at least six feet distance between the two people there. The other safety practices which you have to follow, that is, please do not share your bed, linen, bedding, and towels. Those things which you commonly share with other family members like a mobile phone, tabs, are preferable to avoid them. Do not share your utensils, coffee mugs, plates, spoons, and forks and uh, napkins, etc. Please keep it separate and sanitize a bit more rigorously. One of the essentials are probably most, one of the, you know, you want to consider is identify a room where you have a bathroom or a toilet attached to it. We all know that people after recovering from COVID, they still continue to excrete virus in their stools. So it is important to ensure that the toilet is cleaned appropriately both inside and outside. Along with this, it's important to clean the toilet seat regularly as well. 
there are a number of you know, objects or areas in the house which we call as high touch areas. These needs to be sanitized regularly with either alcohol based solutions or sodium hypochlorite. What are these common high touch areas? These include bathroom fixtures, light switches, sink, tabletops, kitchen tops, doorknobs, toys, and remote control. You may want to consider sanitizing it more frequently than other places. And once you're sanitized, you spray, make sure you clean your hands with soap and water. Another important aspect about managing the situation is handling of clothes and linen. If you have an infected person who has just recovered from, so you may want to use gloves while handling the used clothes. What about washing? Most of the washing machines, current day washing machines, have a hot temperature setting or a hot water temperature setting. Please wash the clothes using this setting. And we all know that coronavirus is fairly sensitive to the heat. As a result, it gets killed fairly easily. If you don't have such machines, what do you do? Simple, soak your clothes in hot water for 15 to 30 minutes and then wash with soap and water. It works equally well. It is preferable to dry the clothes in the direct sunlight rather than in the shade. Hand washing techniques. I'm sure you have watched a number of videos which are circulating around, prepared by WHO, Government of Karnataka, and Government of India. What is important, I want to stress is, please make sure you wash your hands for a minimum of 30 seconds, clean inside and outside, between the fingers and tips of fingers. The same. Now, uh, other question which people ask is, how frequently should I wash my hands? When should I wash my hands? Is there any guide? It makes sense to use, uh, wash your hands every time you use washroom, before and after eating. Whenever there is contact with high touch areas like doorknobs, mobile phones, etc., And of course, after coughing and sneezing. I'm sure you've been bombarded with videos and leaflets about how to wear a mask, how to identify the right size mask, whether it could be a, a, a medical mask, a 3M mask, or you know, a N95 mask, or non-medical mask. It's important to identify the right size, wear it appropriately at all times, when, whenever you're coming in close contact with other people. Other important thing in recovery is what we eat. Try to eat very, very balanced food. Home cooked food is much better than food cooked elsewhere. Make sure there's a good portion of vegetables and fruits in your diet, along with proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Make sure the inner fiber is there in your diet. If you're eating fresh fruits, please eat washed fresh fruits. It is also important to consume plenty of liquid during these times. Plenty in the sense, I mean three to four liters of liquid per day. Half of it could be water. The rest of it can be formed by various fruit juices, including coconut water. I'm sure you will be isolating yourself for at least seven to eight days more. Make sure you get a good sleep every night of six to eight hours sleep. No alcohol and no smoking, please. Your lungs are just recovering. The livers and body is just recovering. You don't want to add more insult to the body. People who have been recovering, what they are doing now in those seven days, 10 days, and even following that is they identify time for meditation. Some of them are enjoying music. Some of them are playing music. Do something you like, like sewing, painting, reading, writing, writing poems, water your plants. Of course, you can watch TV, but make sure that the screen time is not too much. One of the important aspects in COVID recovery is getting your lungs back to normal. COVID infection affects lungs more than any other part of the body. Primarily, it is a respiratory infection. The oxygen, which is the gas of life, 
goes through the lungs into the blood. The air we breathe in goes to the peripheral most part of the lung called as alveoli or air sacs. And it has to pass through a few layers before it can get into the blood. When you have an infection like COVID, those air filled sacs can be filled, can become solidified and, they, and will not allow oxygen to pass through your lungs. There are a number of things which we have seen that which uh, makes the patients better. That include deep breathing exercises. What is a deep breathing exercise? Most of you might wonder, what is that? So you have been involuntarily practicing a few deep breathing exercises. This is when you try to blow a balloon, you take a deep breath in, hold your breath and blow it into the balloon, isn't it? The same thing applies here. When you do the same act, Take a deep breath in, hold your breath in for a few seconds and breathe out. That means air is going to all the parts of the lung and it is expanding all the parts of the lung, making sure they are working fine. The similar acts or similar breathing says we do follow up when we blow a bubble from a soapy solution. We take a deep breath in and we purse our lips and slowly blow it through so that we can form a bubble. The same thing when we smell a flower. These things we were doing involuntarily but not at regular intervals. Now we may have to do it regularly. My suggestion is to do at least five sequences an hour when you are awake. Each sequence might consist of around three to five uh, deep breathing, um, you know, deep breaths in and breaths out. As I was telling, this COVID is primarily affecting the lungs. The lungs is being solidified and some of them develop fibrosis as well. It doesn't affect every part of the lung. Different parts are affected in a different manner. So it is very important that during the recovery and after recovering from acute infection, we need to make sure all the parts of lungs are working well. One way of doing it is, we have people encouraging these to do what is known as diaphragmatic breathing or abdominal breathing. Here in this video you're seeing person is keeping his hand on the chest and the abdomen, taking a deep breath in and expanding the chest, lifting up your abdomen by around three to four centimeters. In this way, the air we breathe in is going to every part of the lung and trying to expand. And if there are any thin secretions like that, so it is trying to, it can be easily come out. The air can easily pass through the lungs into the blood. The other way of doing it is probably you can put a, a book on your tummy, a book or a, a remote on your tummy and do the same thing. Take a deep breath in, hold your breath, count up to five, breathe out and count up to three to five. Again, my advice is to do it at least on five sequences an hour when you are awake. Another thing which we have been recommending people when they have acute infection or during recovery is to use various postures of the body. We've been calling it as awake pruning. It is working like magic. We think lying down on our back is the best position. No, perhaps not. Because the air is going to the same places, the blood is going to the same places and the oxygen is not able to reach the blood because it is not reaching some parts of your lungs. So we have found that putting the patients on their tummy is helping them massively. The same can be done when you have an acute infection or when you're recovering so that every part of the lung is aerated and oxygenated. Different positions I mean, lie down spine position for some time, lie down on your tummy properly for some time, lie down on the right lateral side and left lateral side. All this can be done to help improve entry of air into the lungs and help you recover quickly from the lung infection. The other structured way which we have used in the post-operative patients, our patients who are critically ill, recovering from their criticalness, critical illness is incentive spirometer. It's the device which, in which you take a deep breath in, the more volume you take in, the more balls are lifted. This acts as a visual incentive for you to see how you're performing, how your performance is increasing over time. 
this device costs hardly 750 to 1000 rupees and this can be used effectively in your respiratory recovery. How frequently you should do? You probably should do around five times an hour, every hour when you're awake. The other thing which you want to consider is, yes, you start exercising the lungs. What about other parts of the body? If we don't use them, if we don't use all the muscles, they tend to sleep, isn't it? So as a result, it's advisable to do yoga or pranayama or some form of exercises at least two times a day. If not two times, at least once a day. This will improve your lung performance as well as other parts of the body. The other way of assessing and uh, working on your rehabilitation or respiratory recovery is a six minute walk test. This you can do it by yourself, have a smartwatch or your smartphone with you. Start to walk on a treadmill or on a flat surface. Walk for six minutes continuously. See how many steps you are taking. If you are taking more than 400 steps, that means probably you are recovering quite well. You can also check your saturation before and immediately after walking to see if your saturation is dropping by more than 4%. That means your lung is not back to normal. Now we have recovered from infection, we are slowly recovering, but still the COVID pandemic is all around us. It is very important that we follow the COVID appropriate behavior, maybe for the next few months. No family eating without taking precautions, no parties, and please do not go for weddings and functions and festivals if you can avoid it. I hope this video helps you recover faster and quicker. Wishing you a quick recovery back to normal life. I also take this opportunity to thank my colleagues in the Department of Anesthesia at Astor Abbey Hospital. Thank you very much.